This camera I've got here today is a Mamiya, which I don't usually have anything to do with. A Mamiya family SLR. It's a leaf shuttered SLR, but uh, quite different in construction to a Retina Reflex. Well, in a moment of weakness, I agreed to uh, service this camera. So I'll show you how I go about getting into it. So first of all, um, I'll start with the top, I think. Open the back and we will remove the rewind knob. Rewind knob comes off simply by unscrewing it. We'll pop that to one side. Underneath the rewind knob, what do we see here? There's three screws here holding the meter dials on the top, so we'll have those out. Do I even need to do that? I might not. There's a single screw here that holds the top cover on. We'll see if that will come out by itself. If it does, we don't need to disturb those other three at the moment. They can be dealt with later. There's a single screw at the end of the top housing here. I'll get that. The advance. Now that cap on the top is normal, right hand threaded, nothing unusual. It uh, should come off pretty easily, and it does. Now that tool I was using there is a pair of uh, circlip pliers, or, and uh, that's what it was made, made for doing circlips, those spring clips. The tips on these have been ground and mutilated and actually, to tell the truth, they need to be reshaped, they're getting a bit ugly. So we can lift off the uh, stuff from the top of the film advance. There's only a few components there. Nothing particularly tricky. It's just a bit sticky, I don't know why that is. I imagine that the uh, top of that boss has uh, got a bit spread. Alright, so that's the screws off the top. The top cover in theory should come off now. And it does. What's loose here? Um, there's our shutter release button. That's just sitting loose inside the top. That's a two-piece arrangement. Uh, unit piece, of course, being pressed down if you use a cable release. That's the piece that shifts. Here's our top cover. Not a lot to note. It's built in selenium meter, which in this case is a wee bit dead, like selenium meters tend to be. I'll pop that top cover to one side, and let's see what we've got. Alright, fairly standard arrangement. There are four screws here, appear to hold the prism and probably screen assembly on the top of the mirror box. We can leave those for the moment and turn our attentions to the bottom of the camera. And here we have two screws. Pump the screws to one side. The cover covers on this camera are very light. I think they're no, it is brass, I thought it might have been aluminium, it's pretty light. Okay, that cover should come off, and it does. I'm looking to see if there's anything loose here that will fall off. If I hold the camera upside down, sometimes on cameras you'll find there are spaces and washers and various other things. There's nothing loose here by the looks of it. Tripod socket, while we're here we'll check that, because tripod sockets often work loose. No, that one's good. Alright. 
film chip. Film chip, of course, is a uh, one of the pieces of film that's been chewed out from between the between the sprocket holes um, when someone's reached the end of the film and been a bit rough. And it's not uncommon to find them loose in cameras. There's another one there. Okay. So, what to take? The f We're going to take the whole front section out to deal with the shutter on this because that's where my main issues will lie. So I've got to peel up the leatherette. Let's see if I can get under it. It's a uh, quite a rubbery material and I don't honestly know how durable that will be. Or how well stuck down it is. Right, well, I can peel it back a little bit here. Far enough to get at those screws. That's enough. I can investigate getting it back further at a later date. On this side, can we get under the leatherette? Now here I'm just using pointed tip of my pair of tweezers to get under that edge and if I can get under that then I can peel it back with something else and it looks like I can now some of this leatherette will be stuck down to bare metal and uh, I think it sticks there a lot better than it does here this is sticking down to a painted surface and the adhesive doesn't stick as well to that. I'm just going to peel that back a little bit. have to do this gradually and carefully because I don't want to um, make a mess of it because the leatherette, this, well this rubbery covering is uh, all embossed with tiny letter M's presumably for a mere I'll never get a match for that. Alright, just about pulled that back far enough as far as the, the seam so I can get at the screws. There are four screws there but before I do that there's a single clip on the base here. Little E clip or C clip they're sometimes called. That connects to our shutter so I need that disconnected. Right, back to the front four screws now it's well stuck that's better I don't know if they're all the same length yet so I'll pull them out one by one and we'll check them They're all the same. Four identical screws. Brass screws. They can just pop over there out of Adam's way. Right, so I think the front of the camera should come off. And it does. So we have the entire mirror box all in one piece, complete with shutter and the body. Pop that to one side, let's have a quick look at the body. 
what to note there's little bits of foam here that's obviously leftover foam light trap that has deteriorated over time and that'll need to be replaced when it's reassembled I'm just looking at the film advance mechanism to see if there's anything unusual to it um, anything complicated to it anything that's going to cause me any grief and it looks very very simple so that shouldn't be hard to deal with I'll pop that body to one side and back to the shutter okay well I think the mirror box will come off the shutter and leave the shutter attached to the front housing so my next task is to desolder the flash wire at this point and um, then remove that mirror box from the front housing that's what I'll do back in a minute all the wires desoldered now I'm looking to see what I need to take apart two brass screws here and here and they're held in place with some sort of lacquer like a varnish take that out this one here that has a little tab on it which is holding down that flash sink wire which comes from all the way over the other side of the camera over here so those two screws are out the next two are these ones down in here that one's loose that would have meant uh, that potentially the shutter wasn't fixed rigidly to the mirror box but the other, since the other three screws were quite tight it probably didn't make much difference so I'll remove those screws One. it's a bit harder to get at because it's tucked under the wire let's unhook that wire Get that feedback through the bracket. Here's our screw. So we've got two major components. Here's the mirror box, prism assembly, and capping plate. Now looking in there, I can see that that mirror looks pretty ugly. It's um, very hazy. It's got a few white spots on it. I'd say it's probably been damp. I'm swing that lever across as the film advance would and this should release here and it does so the mirror box is working well it certainly probably can do with a bit of cleaning up a bit of lubrication perhaps but basically it functions and the mirror doesn't look stunning and uh, I'll have to see if I can clean it pop that to one side let's have a look at what we've got here so here we have the shutter assembly um, the rear lens element is here that's screwed in from there and this ring here will retain the shutter in this mount so have I got any tools to get that off I think so let's try this there's a spanner wrench it's a relatively cheap one I think it came from India interchangeable tips works well for a task like this now looking at this rear lens element I can see that it has some marks on it which look very much like fungus so it means quite possibly oh yes 
Yeah, that inner surface is covered in marks that are probably fungus. Um, we would probably blame the camera for being left in a damp storage or something like that for that. Although it, yeah, and I can see the inside of the front group too is in much the same state. So I want to get this retaining ring off. Now the retaining ring may or may not come without a fight. We shall see. If it gives us any resistance at all, I'll add a little bit, few drops of solvent to soften up any oil or lacquer or anything that might be sticking it. That's a bit stiff. Alright, a few drops of cleaner. Let that run around that thread. And just let that soak in for a second and see if it helps. Back to the tools. That does not want to move. I'll try a bit of acetone. And if that doesn't work, I'll be trying a little bit of heat from a hairdryer. And if that doesn't work, I'll be trying a little bit of heat from a hot air gun. That does not work. Try time for some heat. Well I've warmed that up. Let's see if it'll go near. Not at all. Not in the slightest. That's a bother and a nuisance. I don't know whether the thread's binding or whether it's the sur flat surface of that quite broad ring creating the uh, problem. But it'll be the use of lacquer or something that works like Loctite. Nope, it's not going to go. I might have to use some brutal methods on this and you're best not to watch.